Extinction Rebellion is an environmental protection movement that was founded in 2018 in the United Kingdom with the aim of creating awareness for the mass extinction of humans, animals and plants that is going on and through disobedience try to make governments act. To my right, to my left actually, we have Julienne and on the other side Maria on stage. Someone else will be joining later and it's your stage now. Thank you. Thank you so much for your interest in our talk. I'm Maria and I'm in the local group in Berlin. And since February, I've been basically doing nothing except talks for Extinction Rebellion. This is my last talk. On one hand, uh, I see the movement uh, uh, I'm a bit ambivalent about the movement, but also I'm personally ex uh, resource uh, exhausted, resource exhausted myself. I need a bit of a break. And I am from Hamburg. I started in February, 15 people in the group. And now we've brought 6,000 people onto the streets in October. It was a crazy year, fully packed with all kinds of actions and we try to make the impossible possible and within 40 minutes tell you about everything that's happened and we will also try to enter the meta level somehow and analyze some of and that's what we'll do all right let's start so first of all 2019 the climate crisis has become uh, the public has become aware of the climate crisis and if you're inside the climate bubble then you're aware of the bad news every day. Australia is on fire, other countries and continents are on fire. There's basically no day on which uh, you don't hear about uh, severe catastrophes and uh, permanent frost um, is melting. The Victoria Falls uh, were without water in South Africa. Lack of water, droughts, and the mass extinction. Many uh, types of animals, plants, and humans cannot adapt quickly enough to this drastic climate change. And um, the science has concluded that this is the sixth math mass extinction. And of course, this also affects our uh, chance of survival as humans. There is so much that happened, but at the same time, nothing has happened. Hashtag never trust a COP25. The climate conference in Madrid has failed. The US has, as expected, withdrawn from the Climate Pact of Paris. The fossil fuel consumption is even rising as of today. This graph shows the carbon dioxide concentration at Mauna, Mauna Loa Observatory. Um, in Hawaii and uh, also noted here are the different climate meetings like Paris, Kyoto um, but nevertheless the emissions and the concentration of carbon dioxide is rising. Meanwhile the German government has uh, agreed on a climate pact which is essentially worthless and there is nothing part of it that might substantially change uh, the path that you've seen on the graph and the next elections are only in two years and uh, only then we might have a chance to get a coalition that uh, might do something about the climate crisis. Exactly. That's why we as Extinction Rebellion are here. The situation has only worsened. 
and power will do nothing without demanding action. Our first demand is to tell the truth. The second demand is to act now to get to net zero emissions until 2025. And our third demand um, are, uh, listen to the science, but the, the third demand is um, the, the third demand is citizens' assemblies that uh, may act on climate change. Um, at the moment, if we don't act, uh, we risk severe droughts and um, food, uh, lack of food until 2050. If we reach four degrees or warmer average global heating, we risk that billions of people risk death. That's why our first demand is to tell the truth. First, we need the National Declaration of a Climate Emergency. First of all, we have to become uh, climate neutral until 2025. What the fuck? First of all, this sounds very unrealistic, but uh, this is what is actually necessary. We have to act now and we have to enact drastic change now uh, to have any chance of reaching the two degree goal. We already passed the 1.5 degree goal in Germany this year. Even though there's uh, lots of uh, critic about this, we are a movement that wants more democracy. Citizens' assemblies are an already tested uh, tool to provide more direct democracy. Um, where people meet uh, and discuss about these topics uh, aiming to create uh, demands together. We need trust uh, that a diverse amount of voices, no matter with which ethnic background, which uh, income class, uh, etc., uh, these people uh, come from. We have three demands. How do we want to reach these goals? Our preferred method of acting is mass civil disobedience, non-violent civil disobedience. Uh, our government is right now not acting in our best interest when it comes to ecological and climate questions. And the Paris Agreement is being broken by our government uh, that they agreed on themselves uh, in Paris. And because of this non-action, uh, we are ready to uh, even risk, for example, uh, arrest if we we want to be get active in a decentralized and autonomous way. We want to remain active. Um, <coughs> we have four principles here that are particularly important. Number 10, we depend on self-determination and decentralization. Uh, and each, every person that subscribes to these 10 principles is allowed to act in the name of Extinction Rebellion. We are a non-violent network. Uh, that is principle number nine, because we know that these are more effective, more successful, but, but also because we need the masses and non-violence is for accessibility and uh, f uh, is very important. And we overcome hierarchical power structures um, because we've seen that otherwise things don't work so well. And uh, an example, principle number five, reflection and learning are important to us. We are at the end of one action cycle and we are in a phase of reflection right now and uh, considering what to do next. And that's why we want to share something about that with you. Now, Extinction Rebellion is a bit of a copycat movement. It came from the UK and 
uh, in last year the five more most important bridges in London were blocked and that created a lot of awa awareness in an instant and what came from there were these exact three demands, the methods and the ten principles and a first event that showed this is how it can be done, this is how it can turn out and what they also delivered was this toolbox, a graphic toolkit with a sign that can be used non-commercially with a font, colors, a color scheme that should be used and woodcut illustrations. And that immediately enabled people to become active. I'm a graphic designer myself and I could immediately produce materials that for a decentralized movements that works locally is a very, very important thing and uh, for social media, of course, but also for a visual identity to create a feeling of identity. This principle, this copycat principle, of course, also applies within the action formats that are forming within, within the movement. We see the Red Devils here that were very present in the media. They are a circus-like performance group, the Invisible Circus in London. They joined and they luckily all, all, uh, immediately made a DIY video showing you how to make those costumes and, and bring them into use in other places as well. And, and what we did a whole huge lot was talks. We don't have numbers, unfortunately. They would be gigantic if we had them. We would have to build a database for that. We had hundreds of talks, which always consisted of two parts. First was a climate science part, which simply outlined the current status of climate science in a way that people could understand from person to person. That was important. We had talks as an individual organization and universities, schools, institutes, companies, on festivals. And this is a very important instrument for mobilization. It was for us and for the, for the Extinction Rebellion movement, but also as an awareness tool, something that the state should actually do to inform people about what is currently ongoing, what is the state of the science right now. Yes, another personal anecdote, my bandwidth went from the chaos community up to the Catholic Church, uh, the commission there for uh, <laughs> preserving creation. There was more agreement than I would have suspected at first. Not many numbers, but a few. Worldwide, within 30 months, we have uh, become active in 55 countries. The most active ones are France, the UK and Germany in that order. This means everywhere in this world we uh, estimate that we have a potential of uh, 150,000 people which are ready uh, to become part of actions of mass civil disobedience. In Germany we have 124 local branches. The green ones are active and running. They have structures and uh, they might have even split into more local branches. And they have different working groups for IT, arts and others. The yellow ones are still uh, under construction and uh, growing rapidly. We have about 23,000 uh, people, last time I checked the newsletter, and we have Mattermost, a program which is similar to Slack, and there are uh, also thousands of people registered, and that means lots of people involved uh, within Extinction Rebellion Germany and many that came to Berlin. Something important that uh, has only become clear uh, in the months before Berlin are um, local, uh, are small groups which uh, connect uh, more deeply uh, to uh, to go to actions. The great thing is that we don't know who all of these people are, uh, but they're there which has also developed uh, this year are communities, so a bit larger circles where people organize. Here's a word cloud from the UK, a few examples, there are interest groups, for example like XR Army, 
artists, colleges, workers, pharma, so different uh, uh, people like doctors uh, and other workers, and there are also other focus groups like Animal Rebellion, where the, the transformation of agriculture is their main interest uh, uh, in the direction of a animal-friendly uh, agriculture. Uh, other groups like the XR Jews or the Christs, uh, Buddhists or atheists. Uh, this we actually wanted to remove, but it's very, very interesting, so let's, let's talk about it anyway. So these communities are the the source of this. There are two different models of power. The traditional model of power where uh, it's hierarchical, uh, power comes from the top down, and then there's the pillars of support system. So the society in which we live is being supported by these pillars, uh, like the universities, the arts, the bureaucracy, the churches. These communities are a way to um, gain uh, new access to more a more diverse set of people and um, in these institutions we have to start by saying okay I will not uh, support this uh, traditional view of power anymore uh, I connect with other teachers psychologists or others and uh, we organize ourselves and we fight for system change and um, if we hollow out these traditional power structures, then we might actually achieve uh, success. So what has happened this year? In November 2018, uh, there was the first meeting of uh, XR Germany. The first action was in uh, in February, together with Ende Gelände, um, protesting against the uh, coal compromise and there have been way too many uh, concessions made to uh, coal, the coal, the coal industry and very fast all over Germany local branches have developed and uh, they have done uh, smaller actions at first like a dion as you can see here um, dions uh, are an action where people lie down on the ground as if they were dead to symbolize the death uh, of uh, humans and animals caused by the climate crisis. And different actions, uh, 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 for example, of this kind um, have been happening all throughout Germany. The first larger one was in April. Um, for example, uh, in Berlin, uh, but also in London and other large cities. Here you can see uh, a picture from Berlin with about 200 activists, and we actually declared rebellion in front of the German parliament in Berlin. Uh, and here you can see how fast we've grown. This is a picture from June here in Leipzig. Here you find uh, there regularly is a Gothic festival here in Leipzig, and there have been uh, lots of connections uh, to that scene. And there was a successful cooperation um, between Extinction Rebellion and uh, the Gothic scene here, where um, during their event, uh, many participants came to the city center and participated in a dying. Another form of action are swarmings, where, uh, which are a kind of smaller um, block of uh, streets, uh, act of blocking streets uh, or bridges. Um, one form of this is uh, uh, using uh, bikes, uh, which uh, we have done after critical mass meetings. And also important is that we uh, don't only interrupt uh, business as usual, but also tell them why we're doing it and that we are sorry. This is not so cool that you're now interrupted, but um, this is why we do it. And sometimes we even uh, bring cookies, uh, but always flies. This here is uh, an action from XR Youth, the youth 
branch of uh, Extinction Rebellion one day before the Europe elections. Uh, a few young activists have locked themselves um, onto a building to uh, to show that the politics which are failing are something they have to suffer uh, from later and that they will not accept this. And uh, here we are in front of the Chancellor's office with about 30 activists. This was also a copycat action which was done before in the United Kingdom and uh, we've, we've done the same here. In summer the national connection has started and uh, the action level has increased a little. People were interested uh, to volunteer to get arrested and uh, here we were um, on a bridge in Cologne. Nobody was actually arrested but uh, we've learned a lot from this action and, uh, and it was great uh, to, um, to see the success of a uh, open and productive uh, street uh, block. And later we have decided that we need to have a larger action this uh, year in October. Here you can see the action Blood of Our Children. Um, which happened during the cruise days in Hamburg, which generated a lot of press. And this is, um, this is an action together with um, sand in the gears, uh, which, was, uh, which is, uh, was an action to protest the car exhibition in uh, Frankfurt. This here is an action in Freising where people are in um, the window of a clothing shop uh, protesting against fast fashion. This is a picture from Stuttgart uh, where plastic uh, is criticized, the use of uh, plastic and uh, great costumes you can see there. Uh, on the 20th of September uh, was uh, we were also supporting Fridays for Future, for example, here in Munich, uh, where people were standing on melting ice blocks. Um, and in Berlin, we tried uh, to um, motivate people to uh, take part in mass civil disobedience. Um, we call it massive civil disobedience for everyone. Um, and uh, we did a, uh, similar to the Love Parade, uh, a, an action where which looked similar to Love Parade, where um, we also listened to music while we were protesting. Um, here in Berlin, uh, you can see a video live projection, which was uh, part of the closing of the uh, aforementioned action. We also uh, published a book in September and it's a translation of the English book This is not a drill but also completed with uh, text from the German civil society. It's similar to the ten principles that we have and it's uh, something that keeps our environment uh, as our movement together. And there is also a part that is Creative Commons, which you are allowed to copy. It's how to uh, illustrate it with practical tips of how to block streets or how to talk to the police, even with example dialogues. The book, as a promotional action for the book, uh, we went to the Warsaw Street in Berlin. And now this is the main event this year, October. <laughs> we have 15 minutes left. So, October. For months, decentrally, all over Germany, we were walk working and in Berlin we opened an office, the so-called um, Decentral. And the aim was to have large actions in Berlin together um, during the rebellion wave in October this year. And we were very positively surprised. It was the first time that we achieved a large climate camp directly in front of uh, the German parliament where there were workshops, performances uh, and uh, the main topic uh, was citizens' assemblies and uh, you could come there and learn about democracy 
We also prepared uh, different kinds of actions with other uh, local branches, either publicly or uh, secretly. This was the first um, large action blocking a uh, large intersection in Berlin, as you can see here on the photo. And uh, the press was also very interested. Uh, here this is Potsdamer Platz in Berlin, Potsdam Square, and uh, there were also uh, lots of uh, actions for chil a smaller uh, office for children who also could come there uh, to this uh, action. Uh, we also were on the Marshall Bridge directly in front of the parliament and the uh, first German television um, capital city studio and uh, for multiple days in front of the environmental office of Germany um, we were also protesting and um, they had to listen to our uh, open letter to them but there were also uh, other things like uh, street festivals happening there. This is a um, action symbolizing the sad parts um, of uh, our potential future. Um, and people were even sleeping there on the streets to keep up the um, block of the streets. There were people between 12 and 70 um, and they only left uh, for short amounts of time to keep up the uh, to keep up blocking the street. And uh, we also did this, we created this map with interesting places in Berlin, like central offices of parties, uh, companies, uh, other points of power. And the result was that during two days and after, there were lots of small decentral actions like swarmings or gluons. Uh, for example, here uh, at the Konrad Adenauer House, the um, different uh, German offices, um, governmental offices. The largest success was that even though there were lots of people um, criticizing us as radical ecological terrorists, um, that there were no violent uh, things uh, happening at all during uh, the rebellion in Berlin in October. There were uh, no uh, large tumults. Uh, and uh, we managed to have this large program of uh, different actions and Berliners were uh, in solidarity with us, uh, helping us with warm blankets or hot tea. What didn't go so well was our renewed attempt to get arrested. <laughs> Well, in the UK, about 15,000 people have been arrested by now. We only managed to have uh, 15 people in temporary arrest. Um, and the reason why is the different political system. Our protest law, or public assembly law, is one of the most liberal that we have. Other states, such as Belgium, where saw have seen water cannons, but here police were very friendly. Uh, yeah, go ahead, you did tell us what you're going to do. And uh, what also went very well was the presence in the media, 70,000 media reports within one week around the world were generated, and many of them only online in Germany. We were in the main news though, and we've also had these nice newspaper reports. Now, bottom line, uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, conclusion, bottom line. What I would want to add is that we managed to get civil dis disobedience ready for the mainstream, as it were. We had people from Ende Gelände, the co-protests, some of them are here in the room. You started much earlier, but we were able to take it into the cities and 
I hope that we've kind of shifted the, dis the debate somewhat. That's the positives. Uh, so that's all very nice. But politically, we've basically had no success so far at all. And it doesn't look like politics is going to change much. Also, we've received a lot of news in the last few weeks, or generated lots of news in the last weeks that were, that were not really related to the climate crisis. And we'd like to uh, sum this up under the headline of challenges. Imagine that your phone is ringing, such as I experienced four weeks ago. I wouldn't have, I didn't even have, I hadn't even had a coffee. And then we were asked about an interview that our founder had given about anti-Semitism, and we would like a statement on that. And I replied, I haven't read it yet, I, I'll ring you back. So that was kind of a maximal accident. We immediately distanced ourselves from these statements, and we kind of s came through this, but it really shook us, and the fact that one of our founders simply threw this kind of bomb on us, and that we noticed this way that we have lots of structural things and processes, structures and processes that we haven't got anywhere. We cannot exclude anyone. We don't have an entry process. We cannot even manage as a whole movement to communicate what our opinion is on this. There was a polarized debate, and we noticed that the principles we hadn't really internalized yet and uh, be, be together, we found that we are not very regenerative in the way we deal with each other. And this was a very tense situation for us. And we saw this, of course, as, a, as an opportunity to stop this copy-paste principle and take everything that comes from the UK. But we are ourselves, and that is good. And we will find our own path. And we will look at our strategies. And yes, I would also say the problem with Roger goes deeper. It's not just the fact that this, that back then in November this escalated. It touches the foundations of Extinction Rebellion because, because the strategy to be in the large cities comes from him and even earlier in interviews and his texts, there were some very dubious formulations and views and to see the problem from a, the problem from a German perspective was that people said oh wow finally something someone's doing something against the climate crisis we want to get active and they jumped on the bandwagon but many many people including myself hadn't read these texts at all and that now is coming back to us and uh, that created this medial bomb that kind of exploded on us and we lost many people of course due to that and some people are struggling to work through this and and clarify and, and find out how we deal with this in the future and how we distance ourselves and yeah that is ongoing it will take a while until we just for ourselves will find us and uh, what I can say is that uh, there is a private survey going around and the international networking has very much been activated through this because other countries too were completely in disagreement. So there is a worldwide process of reflection right now and whether UK deserves to be the center, which it isn't really, and how we can prevent something like this. Also, um, the important thing is that we shouldn't get stu stuck with this, we should manage in 2020, we should look, look ahead towards 2020, that is the year and that's get me on, on the final straight. Uh, 2020 will be the last year when we can save the Pri um, Paris Climate Accord and uh, that will be when the states will renegotiate and unless we have very decisive actions and resolutions, then we will be left to our own. We cannot spend any more, we cannot allow any more funding for fossil fuels by then. And there are institutions that want the exact opposite and they are lobbyists equipped with billions of money, uh, large corporations, plastics, meat, uh, agrarian industries. We have to win public opinion by 2020 and convince them that 
human-made climate change is real and that the time window is now. So help us tell the truth wherever you are, especially on the platforms such as YouTube and Facebook. There are far too many climate deniers out there. And these are huge challenges. And we can only succeed if we are, have people all over society who have an influence and if we network internationally and if we start to become a global movement of movements. There are many predecessors, there is networking and we're on it. We want to network with the climate justice movement, we want to work together, we are seeking support and we can only manage if we keep growing, keep founding alliances, find new communities, reach new goals and carry civil disobe disobedience everywhere. Right, hi, this is Sina. Sina is the co-publisher of... I'm sure that no one wants to die out, no one wants to be involved, but in the way we all are. So if we look towards 2020 or generally, we all ask ourselves, how can we rebel, how can we stop certain things and other things, how can we start doing other things? What happens, what could happen, what could all happen? We don't have any time. Towns, communes could enter into disobedience, into resistance. New networks, communities can form in Europe, local and global. Best practices for infrastructure and administration should be exchanged. Infrastructures will be erected newly for, for everyone in communities. And we no longer leave infrastructure to the state or to companies. Company, uh, water, uh, everything will be organized by everyone for everyone. A European-wide protest of small farmers and uh, small landowners against national bureaucrats, bureaucracies and regulations is linking up with the environmental movements, with the Fridays. A politics for soil preservation will be put into the foreground. Property is understood as a social obligation and people use their vehicles to enforce change in mobility. They block motorways. People are roller skating on motorways. The oil crisis. Blockades of roads and airports lead into uh, different networks let every employer of the coal, indus coal industry in Germany and elsewhere to find a new job immediately. Coal exit from the grassroots. New activists are supported in a solidarity way through basic incomes. The rebellious youth doesn't have to enter the system. The middle-aged generations wake up and realize that their own future has already been stolen and that they won't be able to pay out pensions anymore or they won't receive pensions anymore. There's a strike every Monday, a day of solidarity. Fridays we keep on striking and the one hour everywhere in kindergartens, companies, administrations is used to talk about how it could be, what is not okay. And that gets the three-day week introduced practically in Germany and Europe also to cushion the consequences of transformation. Now let us really rebel, whether it's with Extinction Rebellion or elsewhere, find ways, other ways. Thank you. Thank you so much to these uh, three women 
But uh, in order to talk to you um, constructively, um, you can connect with us uh, on this Congress in Komona in Hall Number Two today and tomorrow between 19 and 20 o'clock. There's a black tower which is called uh, the Black Tower. But we're here for uh, another couple of minutes, so just come to the front. And um, this uh, was translated. Uh